I want to ask a question in here. How many people have a pen and, a, and paper here? How many people brought pen and paper? This is part of our crises. Every hand should have, they should raise their hand. Because either you came here to learn something, or you came here out of curiosity, or you came here to be entertained, or you came here because somebody dragged you here, or you came here, like Muhammad Sharif said, to take notes for the Canadian government, or maybe for the United States government. I don't know. And maybe they have pen and paper too, because they don't go anywhere without, they always bring pen and paper and a recording machine, right? <laughs> and that's why they're ruling the world, because they work at it. They work hard, right? But we, we should have pen and paper. What I've noted is that, is that a, the women tend to always have pen and paper, right? Seriously, and it's not for nothing that women are taking over in the universities and in all the major fields now because the men are watching football. It's like, <laughs> it's what somebody said, seriously, somebody said about the fiasco in Washington, right? And that's a very good example of, of what's part of the crises. But really, Islam looks at, at, uh, at, at peccadillos as really it's the least of, of the problems. In fact, the Republican Party in the United States is, is really, uh, they, they're contributing more to the destruction, to the moral destruction of the United States because they serve corporate interests completely and wholeheartedly. And it is the corporation that is destroying families and communities more than any other single factor in the United States, really. And so they are, they're hypocrites, right? They're hypocrites, and they deserve people like whatever that pornographer's name is who's exposing as many of them as he can, because they are hypocrites. But the point is, is that we, as an ummah, need to begin to revive our intellectual tradition, to think, right? To take notes, to go with, with, with benefit, not to come and just sit. These people work hard. They really work hard, and that's why they're ruling the world. And we are the ones that should be ruling the world as Muslims. And if you look out there, we look so pathetic. In fact, it's really extraordinary that they even take us seriously. But the reason they take us seriously, the reason that they take us seriously is because they know history. They study history, and they're very worried about conflagrations of Islamic revivalism. This scares them because they read. They say, look at this 19th century, something very mysterious happened. What was that? Well, suddenly there was this mujahid that appeared in West Africa, and then at the same time, there wasn't, we can't even find any, any material correlation. Maybe they met in Mecca, but who knows? Suddenly there's a mujahid appearing in Hunan province in China, and he's saying the same things, and people are responding. And suddenly there's somebody in Sudan who's doing it too, and somebody in Algeria, and somebody in Libya, and somebody in Turkey, and it's suddenly happening all over. And how does this happen? We want to understand this. So they examine it. They hire people. They give them grants to do PhDs that end up in Langley in Virginia and other mysterious places that we're not allowed to in this open democratic society to examine what they're talking about, right? This wonderful democratic society that prides itself on its openness, in fact, has the most closed and secretive uh, organizations and institutions that have been known in the history of man, right? But they study us, they examine us, they dissect us, they analyze us, they do psychological profiles on people like me and Muhammad Sharif and other people that get up and speak publicly. They look at the books we read if we buy with credit cards or check out in the library. I'm not making this up. This is, this, this is what they're doing. They have $30 billion from the Congress to do things like this. And then we don't even know what they're making on the side with all their cocaine deals. So they have a lot of money. They have money to burn. And they're very serious because they see Islam as a threat. They see Islam as a threat to their way of life. What's their way of life? When the head of the President of the United States Security 
retired and became the head of a professional football team's security in the United States, his quote was about that strange and dramatic shift from protecting the President of the United States to protecting uh, Troy Aiken or somebody like that. He said, there's nothing contradicting in this. I made an oath to protect the American way of life. And football is the American way of life. You see, this is really, this is what they want to give the world. Games, Roman games, the old Colosseum. Put people in front and watch them, watch them watch people get eaten alive. Christians eaten alive by lions. Now they let them watch Muslims being bombed, smart bombs on dumb Muslims. This is what they do. Watch it on CNN, right? This is the forum, the modern forum. Watch the Muslims get eaten alive by the, the desert storm people and then the desert fox. And, and it's amazing nobody even commented. Desert fox is, is a Nazi general named Rommel. Well, I mean, why are they calling it Operation Desert Fox when he was a, a fascist Nazi general whose primary arena, theater, they call it theater of operation because to them it's a game. It's, it's, a, it's a cinema. It's a game. Theater of operation was North Africa, right? The desert fox, Rommel. And that's what they called it. So this is what they do. And they'll entertain you until you drop dead. They'll entertain you until you drop dead. That's one promise, right? They will entertain you until you drop dead. And they'll drop dead too, and it doesn't matter because they get replaced, right? Really, they all drop dead. All their actors and actresses and producers and directors, they all drop dead just like everybody else. 